Hi guys, this is Corwin. And I guess this is James. Thanks for listening to This, this Movie's Gay. Gay. Why did we say it together? Because you I didn't want to do in. that. Yeah, guys. It's fine. It's a, a fine and a half. Corwin, can I ask you something? Sure. What's your question? What's James? been going up with on with the brown line lately? It seems like it's always going express, and Nicole's always having to wait hours for it. This seems like a very mundane question that I don't know the answer to. Well, because you ride the brown line, and it was express when you came, and did you have to get off at Western, or did you just wait for the other? I got off in Western, and then Whoa. I took the other line back. Oh, one stop. I would have just scootered. I don't have a scooter. Buy one. Hey, guys, if you want a scooter, a real nice one that you can trek through the city, don't go lime, don't go bird. Get a push scooter. That's a Razor scooter. 5A or A5 can never remember. They's got big ass wheels. I don't have a scooter. I've only fallen over once on it. You know that big county building? I think we've told this story before. No. And it has that silk, smooth stone it was by no. our old work. It's the county I know, building. I know what the county building is. Yeah, and it has that very smooth, and I was scooting on it when it was raining, and I just <laughs> slipped right over, oh, and this lady just looked at me after I just beefed it, <laughs> and after I, get, after I got up, she kind of like motions towards me because she saw that I saw her to be like, oh, yeah, I'll come help, and once I got up, I went, <laughs> I just went... Thank you. <laughs> and then I scooted, even though I was in the right to you be bowed. mean. You should have. You should have said thank you and given a no, very was, elaborate bow. I, okay, the bow could have been passive aggressive. I wanted something to be passively aggressive. You know, you need passive aggression. Just ask me. I felt so bad for doing it. <laughs> Even though I know I was in the right to I to mean, be like, hey, you just saw. I granted, I yelled fuck really loud, <laughs> but like, I'm not going to be. I'm angry that I fell and I hurt myself. I'm not going to be angry at someone who helps me up off the ground. But you're angry at someone who saw you fell and hurt yourself, and they didn't help you. It's the fact that they they could have just turned and walked away. I would have been fine with that. But after I got up, <laughs> then they motioned towards to say, I'll help you out. Oh. Or do you need help? No. Maybe maybe she just had a real dumb moment where she saw you fall. She just didn't understand it and didn't process it until after you stood up. And then she was like, oh, and then it was too late. Yeah, too late to never more like it. Uh, I don't I, know. I probably, my automatic reaction, I can already tell you now what it is because this has happened my automatic reaction to someone just absolutely wiping out in front of me Ooh, would probably bad. be to just look at you with disgust for like a solid minute and then after i'd be like oh shit i need i should probably help that they're gone after a yeah. solid minute and I'm just like oh oops mine is oh shit they might be very hurt so I, I go mean, help. if they were very hurt then then yes but what i'm picturing in my head is you you razor scootering and then you slipping on the, the smooth, silk smooth stone in the rain and just like sliding out and going, Fuck! No, no, no. It was sliding in a... Ver okay, so I'm going like this. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to describe it for people. And picture if someone had sideswiped me, like T-boned me. Yeah. That's how I fell down and I just smacked oh. <laughs> my head right away. I mean, did you have a helmet on? No. Oh, I'm I would have fucking cool, <laughs> dude. I would have felt bad, but I definitely my instant reaction would have been one just my face like, ugh. And then I would have been like, oh, I I should be nice. We gotta program Corwin better. Hey guys, if you're into robotnics, uh we we need some help over here. I sent a <laughs> uh I sent an email to my boss. The like boss's boss, like she's she's my head boss. Like I'm my other people that I'm like, oh, my boss, I'm like friends with on, them on Facebook. And like we chat, I have writers meetings with one of them, all of that humble brag Get drinks and all that stuff. But my this one that I'm talking about, she's like very intimidating and people are scared of her. And she's just she's really good at her job. I, I respect her as as my boss. But I accidentally sent an email to her that was signed 
Core One Five. It was literally C O R W zero N the letter five. I have no idea why it did that. It was my phone. It just auto corrected Corwin to Core One Five. I Core One. So I it was, was just C O R C O R W zero N five. And my coworkers also make fun of me for sounding like a robot on the phone. Oh. So it was a big thing in the office because I had to forward that email later to another coworker and they saw it and it was just like, Core 15, that's your robot name, Corwin. Yes, we know his model and make. I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, no, the 15 might be the model and then the make might be a core. No, there wasn't a... It was like... well. It was like W zero N, so like I won, like I was a winner. Wait, okay. But in in uh, robot you, speak, you might need to write this out for me. Okay, so it's C O R. Yes. Then what's next? W. Okay, then a W, and then a zero, a zero, and then an N, N, and then a five. Oh, uh, core O one. Oh, I thought it was like the number one. No, no, no. no okay, no. core one five. All right. It was. It was really funny. That You're that like, happened, especially because my coworkers literally like five minutes before we figured out that I accidentally did this, they were commenting on me being robotic. Yeah, because oh, and, people are constantly commenting on that. It's not it's a very random great. occurrence. It is a random occurrence. You're like all the best fives. Johnny five. <laughs> Alpha five. Aren't there five uh, Voltron people? Uh, yeah, there? there's five of all those yeah. people. Yeah. And, I'm all five. Uh, what's another cool? Um, let's go R two D five. There's probably one out there in the expanded universe. Maybe I don't know how they get those droid names. R two D five. I'm not gonna give away my secrets. Corwin, I would like to let you know why I'm exhausted today. Yes. And I would like to say Before that. Before you do that, I am gonna say that we are watching the movie Eat with Me. From 2014, and the entire time James and I saw them cooking food and were like, oh my god, I want that. Okay, and then I'll even, before I get on to why I'm exhausted, I was very upset. So I thought Corwin, I messaged him and said, hey, what the hell mouth isn't recording this morning? You can come over whenever. And Corwin said, oh, I'm cooking brunch. This was around maybe 11 <laughs> o'clock a.m. And I was like, oh, then Corwin's going to be here in maybe two hours. No, that's not like, I don't know what brunch you were having that takes six hours. It is now dinner if you're still eating. He was having, I guess, a five course brunch. But because of that, I'm very exhausted and stressed, which means I will stress eat. And ice cream's the easiest thing to stress eat. So I went and got ice cream. And when I got back, Corwin then said, hey, I'm on my way. And I said, fuck, I won't be able to eat this ice cream. So wasn't able to eat ice cream. You should have just eaten it. I even said, I was like, I'm on my way, but I still have to walk to the brown line. Yeah, but that still means I want From like, Chicago stop. I want like 30 minutes to fully... You had 30 this. minutes. Well, I didn't know that because then, oh, it's I told expressed. you what brown line stop I was going to. Yeah, Chicago, to, that's, that's like a 25-minute trip. But then the brown line, like I said, is fudging up. And speaking of fudge, I got double chocolate and it's got fudge swirls in it. And then we watched this lady buy three chocolate ice creams and oh, eat them God. sadly wanna, on a bench. Which I was going to just sad eat ice cream a couple days ago. I I think I ate an entire carton in one day. Are you, why did you need 30 minutes process? Are you lactose intolerant? No, I like to eat ice cream and process it. I There's chocolate chips in it. It's mint chocolate chip. I like to eat the ice cream and then let the chocolate chips dissolve in my mouth and then I swoosh them around with my the chocolate around with my tongue. Wait, no, it, this isn't mint chocolate. This was this is double chocolate brownie. So it still has those swirls of chocolate in it that I like to swirl in my mouth. Stop swirling things in your mouth, James. Hey, guys, guess what? It's good for ice cream, it's good for chocolate, and it's good for that brandy whiskey you're always drinking. Swish it in your mouth. Should have went with wine because that's what wine tasters do. You got to smell the head of the beer, that frothy head. I brought wine. Do you want me to get the wine out? No, I don't drink. You know that. 
Well, you were saying that you're turning away from vegetarianism. Uh, that was and, a joke. And uh, so I'm assuming you're going to drink as well. No, remember, alcohol is a, a white trash drug. It's wine. Uh, yeah, and wine is alcohol, and I find that to be white trash. Okay. It goes meth <laughs> and then alcohol. Because people crack open a beer and just drink it. They do box wine, you know, wine in a bag. I don't have box wine. I actually have some... some Cambrion Saint Blanc. Some blank. two buck chuck from Trader Joe's. Ooh, get that two dollars. It's so, actually four dollars. Well, then why lie. do they call it two buck chuck? It used to be called... It used to be two dollars. Oh, inflation. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I'm exhausted, and before I explain this... I do understand that one I was it was an irrational amount. I feel bad for it, but it was justified completely. I am sleeping and I was sleeping in, meaning if I'm still sleeping when Nicole's alarm goes off, I want to keep sleeping. Usually I wake up an hour or two before her. She gets up at eight on Saturday. So I'm like, OK, I'm exhausted. I want to sleep until at least nine I feel this hit on my leg and it, I wake up and Nicole is standing at the foot of our bed and says, you put the jelly cap on too tight. Can you undo it? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I try and undo it, but my, I am still sleeping. My hands were sweaty. So I'm like, Hey, can you like get a napkin or something for me to, to, so my hands not wet. And then she's like, well, here, just just take this shirt. And is being kind of like pissed with me that, oh, James, you put this on too tight and you're not already you don't already have the cap off. The is that what you call them? Caps? Yeah. The the, the top. top. Yes. The so lid. The lid. The we'll lid. go with the, the lid top. So I'm like, <laughs> so just I one or the other. So I wipe it off, but she had come in from the humidity of the outside and into the bedroom where the AC was on, which that already that pit. Nicole, I know you're not going to listen to this, but I've told you so many times when you get up and I am sleeping, turn off the AC. I don't like that on when I sleep because it makes me my my chest hurt. <laughs> so then because of that it wasn't my hand that was sweaty it was just the cap that was sweaty the lid cap and it was wet so i say nicole can you like get a square of toilet paper so i can do this and she she just goes well just use the shirt and i'm like no it's covered in frank hair probably don't use the shirt because then the cap's going to be covered in hair and so will the jelly can so now i'm i'm getting angry because I'm like, you, you you woke me up to undo the jelly. <laughs> and oh. you're not accommodating my needs to undo this, this lid cap for you. So she goes and gets that. And I'm like having to stand up to like get better position. And my wrists are weak. Like they, they haven't, <laughs> they haven't like acclimated to being awake yet. I know. When you wake up, you're so weak. I know. And now I'm feeling like emasculated practically of like, oh, I can't undo this thing. So she like gets that and like I un... But at, at, she's like, you want to know what? I'll, I'll never... Okay. Regardless, if you are in a relationship or just in a friendship, a roommate, and you ask someone to do something that they have to then spend time or be inconvenienced to do, don't just say, well, you want to know what? I'll just do this. No, the damage is already done. She says, you want to know what? I'll just put cheese on my toast. And I say, no, no, I'm already halfway doing this. It's almost done. Just get the <laughs> square of toilet paper. She gets that. I unscrew it. And there is a huge difference between Nicole and I. You can wake up Nicole. She can do anything. She can have a day and then fall asleep within 10 seconds. Me, if I wake up for anything, there a few weeks ago, I told everyone, I believe Frank was throwing up mm -hmm. and he was throwing up at like three o'clock in the morning. I could not go back to sleep after that. So Nicole wakes me up at like 8.15. This is, she had just woken up. She wants me to unscrew this. I can't go back to sleep. So now I'm exhausted. I didn't get to sleep in and I'm peeved. Ah. Uh. Didn't, I could have actually went back to sleep because then TC and Anissa and AJ didn't show up for the recording. 
but then I made a beat, but I'm exhausted, guys. And I was irre- I was fuming, like probably the most angry I've ever been at Nicole. That The reasons I have ever gotten into <laughs> fights with Nicole, luckily this didn't get into a fight, that are my fault, we've explained before, is one, many years ago, like four years ago, I was eating too much ice cream. And Nicole said, you should probably stop doing that. And I said, I am working 12 hour days lifting up so much shit. If I want to eat, you know, those big jugs of ice cream. Jesus. I was eating one of those a week. Okay. Maybe a two. Week. I thought you were going to say in a day. Oh, and no, I was no, no. like, oh, God. James. And maybe in three days. It, those would last me three days because I'd eat like two big mugfuls each night because I'm fucking exhausted. I'm stressed. And ice cream, it gets the job done, guys. But, oh, if you, okay, you want to know what, do you think I'm in the right of being angry? However, I immediately, after taking a shower to calm down, apologize for getting that mad. And she did apologize for saying like, yeah, I, I shouldn't have woken you up because I'm woke as hell, guys. It sounds like it was solved. Yeah, but let us know how you would <laughs> react in that situation. I mean, I am a, a, sleep is a very tricky thing for me. I have real bad insomnia. But when I am asleep and if I'm woken up, I am a sort of light sleeper. So I wake up easy. But once I'm in that groove of actually sleeping, I can fall right back to sleep. Ugh. So I'm a light sleeper ever since the trailer we lived in leaked. If all of a sudden I hear this sink faucet drip, I think there's a leak in the house and I immediately wake up. So if it's raining, I immediately wake up just to be like, okay, uh, are, are we leaking? Nope, nope. And now with Frank, if I hear anything, if he meows a little bit louder than normal during the night, I think he's about to throw up. So I'm I'm zip tied out of there. Luckily, we got that uh, Elisa mattress. So it, it's it's gotten exponentially better. I don't think I have night terrors anymore, so that's good. I mean, mine is like, I can, it just takes me forever to fall asleep. And then if anything, if anyone comes into the room, it's mostly people. If anyone or animals or anything like that come into the room, I'll instantly wake up for that. But if my alarm goes off, I will, without waking up, I will turn it off. Oh, well, this is very easy to understand to the listeners. Corwin doesn't want animals or people coming into the room while he's sleeping because they will see the power cord in his back. <laughs> and then he himself has an internal clock, so he knows before the alarm is going to wake up so he can get that just in case someone walks in, sees that power cord in his back. Yeah, but the problem is that I'll need to have been up and I'll turn the alarm off and then I'll wake up three hours later and I'll be like, how the fuck did I turn this alarm off? Oh, no. I have literally, like, I have quizzes and things on my phone with oh, my yeah. alarm. I have to solve puzzles to wake myself up. And that's a brilliant app. I, there have been a couple of times where I've managed to turn it off and then not woken up. I, I don't know. Got to up those quizzes. <laughs> yeah, I have to make them really hard. <laughs> Otherwise, I will not wake up. And the great thing about it is that while the quiz is hard and I'm trying to solve the quiz, the alarm is steadily blaring. So I'm like, all right, well, I got to solve this fucking equation here. Nicole has put her alarm clock on the other side of the room. That won't work for me. I will literally, I'm like, it's not a person. I will go right back to sleep. Oh, um, uh-oh. I'm like, nope, bye. But I'm also, th but then she'll put on like nice calming or music that she likes uh -huh. So she just stays in bed and listens to the entire album and then See, and goes once, to sleep. Once I am, oh, sleep, no, sleep, I, I literally, it is something that I cannot do. Nicole, I have these drinks, these, uh, they're called NeuroSleep. I'll get those. They're really great because they have melatonin and tryptophan in it. Tryptophan is the stuff in Turkey that makes you tired. So I'll take those. I'll have one. If I want to sleep long, I'll drink the whole thing, and then in an hour, I'm out. But that's one of the few things I've found that actually puts me to sleep. Otherwise, I will lay in bed for literally hours just sitting there. Oh, you got to smoke that dank, son. But Nicole once fell asleep, like dead sleep, snoring, in the middle of a conversation we were having in bed. We were just talking, and then all of a sudden, there's a lull in the conversation, and... Like REM sleep. That's how deep of a sleep. 
just snoring. And I say, hey, what? wake up. And she's like, what? what? And I said, we were, t- we were talking. See, I'll also talk in my sleep, apparently. I learned that in the dorms. Well, and I remember them because I, once I get to sleep, I'm fine. Usually I'll fall asleep on couches, fine. Couches, if I, if I sit on a couch, I am instantly asleep. Like a couple times during the movie, I was, oh, I was like, Oh, I need to. I'm about to. I'm about to doze off. About to nap. But it. if it's like me going to bed, no. I and I've literally gone home from work, passed out on the couch, gotten up, went to my room, laid down in bed, and instantly just been super awake. I'm Corwin, like, all right, great. How are we? Twenty two minutes into this. Does that say twenty two? It says twenty two. I was thinking we were seven minutes into this. No, we have been talking for a while. Your story was pretty long oh man just, it wasn't just your story we've been we've been going off and oh yeah we, we so did the this brown mm, line this movie is called eat with me it does center around food a lot basically what happens is that it centers around this guy's mom when the story opens we just see her sitting in bed watching tv and then her husband like huffs awake and goes i can't do this anymore or she says what's wrong he goes this is killing me and she said what is and then he gets up and he cuts his wedding ring off which i'm i thought he was cutting just his finger off i thought like it was some weird like callus he was trying to remove so i'm glad that didn't happen yeah he cut his wedding ring off and then eventually she goes to new york to visit her son and stay with her son for a little bit that was in new york he wasn't they weren't in new york but she goes to New York, yeah. Oh, I thought that they were in L.A. No. Oh. They were in New York, I think. Oh. Yeah, yeah they were in New York. So they go there. No, 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 because when he was on that high, when he had sex with that first person, uh huh. when they were up, that looked like Los Angeles. That would not have been New York. Maybe it was. Or maybe Wherever San Francisco. Oh, maybe they're in San yeah. Francisco. I Let don't know check. where they are. I wasn't paying enough attention to know that. Oh, I don't think they said. They didn't say. They didn't show anything that really said where they were. I didn't pay a lot of attention. It's fine. Actually, yeah, probably San Francisco since George Takei was there. So, okay, yeah. They were, his mom goes and stays with him and is like, oh, can I stay with you? We see the restaurant that the son owns that was from the mom's brother and it's not doing so well. The mom, you know, just sort of is kind of trying to figure herself out without her husband there. And she wants spice in her life. She keeps adding hot sauce and things to all her food because she's been eating bland food at home. Okay. And then... Can I talk on that real quick? Yeah. That guy wasn't feeling suffocated by his marriage. No, 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 no. He was feeling suicidal because all he was eating was oatmeal and egg whites. That will make you want to kill yourself. And th- normally that trope is that the the nagging wife is making me eat yeah. egg whites, blah, blah, blah. But no, he was the one saying our cholesterol is too high. We need to eat egg whites and oatmeal. And yeah, anyway, the mom knows that her son's gay but ends up seeing him in bed with another guy and freaks out about that. She meets George Takei. And then the son whose restaurant is sort of failing learns to make dumplings from his mom. And he does a pop-up restaurant at his friend's restaurant where they serve dumplings. And then it works out. I call dumplings little dumpies. No, you don't. Yeah, I know. But it's Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So they were in LA. Preserve the LA. Oh, fuck, man. Uh, I'm really having trouble. Um, Per the Amazon Prime synopsis. There we go. Great. I have no idea. The train looks very similar. I don't know. All trains look the same. I don't know why I thought New York. I apologize for leading you guys wrong. So yeah, that's what happens. The The story is, it's a pretty cute little story. Yeah, it mostly centers around the mom and her son trying to have a relationship in a way. Yeah. Because the son and the mom are, you know, they talk, but they don't talk about anything real. And the fun thing about this movie is that the dialogue in the very beginning is super, super duper clunky. And you're like, wait a minute, is this just like bad acting or are they just that awkward 
as their relationships. And later the dialogue's not not yeah. that clunky. So I'm like, maybe that was a choice. But it it does sound very clunky. So speaking on the mom, she has, you know, she's wanting to change, but in the beginning she does have some questionable opinions and ways of thinking. However, one thing she knocks down on the head, and that is food trucks should not exist, guys. <laughs> they are gross. I don't want to eat outside. I don't want to go to a, a just a friggin' street to find food. Food trucks, okay, I'll say possibly things like Taste of Chicago, maybe. However, I'm not going to go spend money, inflated prices for food that I could just go to the restaurant and get a full meal, babies. But a carnival, yes, that's fine to have like a food in a truck-like structure. Why do you have problems with food trucks, James? Because I don't want to eat outside. I don't, they're so cramped in there. Do you not there. like patios? Uh, no. Oh, no. Why don't you get on a patio? No, because patios the wind. Patios are beautiful. No, the wind could blow. All of a sudden, oh, my friggin' spaghetti sauce got on me because the wind gusted. Uh, the bees? wind is not going to gust enough to blow your spaghetti yeah. sauce onto yeah. you. I have very light spaghetti <laughs> sauce, okay? I mean, hopefully it's in a bowl. Bees. I have experience. I did go on a date with a guy and for brunch, and there was a bee that just kept attacking our plates. I had, had pancakes, and they were delicious. So when I have a soda can... I will just pop it a little bit, but it doesn't open up. So then you kind of suck on it like a little baba. Why would you do that? Well, this is, I was just about to say, the reason why I started doing that is because I would always go over to my Nena and Pa's and we would eat outside. They just wanted to eat outside so badly. Eating outside's great. It's bad, guys. Don't do it. And you crack open a soda can, all of a sudden that gets the bees. They want to crawl in there, almost swallowed a bee because of it. So now I only I crack it open a little bit, and then it also allows me to moderate what That's I why eat. You, you you do the thing that grandparents do, and you turn the the soda tab around, and then you put a straw in it. So there's no holes for the bees to go in. It's kept for the straw. But the bee's still going to want to try and crawl down that little straw. The bee can't get in the straw. It's too small for still, the bee. Still, guys, don't eat outside. But eat outside all the time. Eating outside's great. Patios in Chicago, beautiful. No, they're not. Rooftops in Chicago, oh, windy beautiful. As fuck. So good. Also, I love it. Unless the rooftop has at least a six foot fence on it, I don't want to go up on it. Well, because then someone could anywhere, easily James. push you. Just ugh. and then guess what? You're falling down. You dead as a doornail. Just don't walk near the edge. What if the door's by the edge? The door's usually not by the edge. Uh, yeah. If the edge is there, he'll spear me off. The oh wrestler, the God. edge. <laughs> Why? He has a finisher name called the spear. He goes, spear. All right, James. James, you're wrong about patios. And I food trucks. love food trucks. I love patios. I love all of that. But what it's would great. you rather do? Do do you like go to food trucks for a meal? Meaning like, oh yeah, I could I go mean, to I mean usually you're doing like you're doing street food at that point usually. Yeah, it's dumb guys. Don't do it. Just it's a get thing real estate everywhere. But it's it's beautiful. Some of the best tacos I've ever had were from little street vendors. So good. Now, like a food trailer that I'm a little more open it up wasn't, to. It's not a trailer. Yeah. Literally just a little cart with a griddle on top. Yeah. No, thank you. So good. Where's their hand wash station, Corwin? They got one. Oh, pff, doubt it. <laughs> they're delicious. But also they're wearing gloves. But, I mean, but they do wash their hands. But yes, they're wearing gloves. Okay. Saying the food is delicious isn't an argument for it. Because you it could is. also get delicious food inside. Yes, but yeah. food trucks and carts like that are more accessible to things like going to a concert, stuff like that. I or don't do you're that. like walking in the park. I don't do that. There's bees out you're in the park. You're walking around and, and shopping. So you stop I at the food that. truck and get a little I don't sandwich. Have a job. Well, James, <laughs> everyone else does these things. Actually, when I had a job, I still wouldn't buy from a food truck. Well, you've got, I mean, I understand because you've got 
some things about food that other people don't have problems with. Like, you don't eat with your hands. I sure don't. So other people don't have that problem. I did, and Nicole was very surprised. You know, at Taco Bell, the Cine Twists? Uh Uh-huh. I ate a couple of those with my index and my pinky finger really delicately. I saw you eat something with your hands once while we were watching a movie, and I was like, James? What are you doing? Uh, and you said it was with your fingernails. So uh, Yeah. Oh, no, it was the brownies. Oh, yeah. But, no, but that wasn't just beca- because I didn't want to put a fork back in to that brownie dish. And they were like little bite-sized brownies. I would not have cared. You could actually double dip in some cheese dip that I've got. I'm not going to care, James. Ooh, guess what? Corwin, uh, when I double dip and you eat a chip, you're going to have the same diseases I got. I mean, my immune system's great. That's a weird flex, man. It's a flex I just made. Wait. Oh, I thought you were going to say made up. And I was like, wait, that's... <laughs> wait. But then you didn't. <laughs> wait, what? Wait. Oh, uh, I went and saw Frankenstein Thursday uh, at Looking Glass. It was absolutely amazing. Beautiful show. Loved every second of it. But I posted in the oh, group yeah. chat... Because there was a lady right across from us, me and my friend, just on the other side, because it's theater in the round, so it's arena style. There was someone directly across from us, and there was a spotlight on her, and then she was surrounded by people talking to each other and not at her, and the two people beside her on other si- either side were leaned as far away from her as humanly possible when I first noticed her. So she was like sticking out like a sore thumb, and it was the funniest shit. I've ever seen in my life. To make this okay, I, I want to think maybe before the production, she was being either a real snob or just a real dick, and that's why they were leaning away from her. She wasn't even like on her phone at first. She was just sitting there awkwardly. Yeah, staring. some people, uh, some people don't need a phone to just be like, "Oh, this is taking up my time." Well, she she did get on her phone immediately after that. But when I first noticed her, I was like, "Oh God, she's my new hero. She's my new hero, y'all." She's going to shows by herself. She doesn't care if anyone around her is not talking to her. She's doing her own thing. Yeah, I've done. It's beautiful. I've, I've been to shows like that. But it was just just the fact that like everyone was leaning away from her already sort of highlights her as being this person in the middle of a group because the people in front of her were talking to each other. The people on either side were leaning away. People behind her were talking to each other. So it was just like her there in the center of all this. And then there was a fucking spotlight on it's her. It's insane. A fucking spotlight. Uh, And I looked around. No one else had a light on them like that. Not a single other member of the audience. If you want, we could post that, but blur out her face. Uh, uh, It's beautiful. As a visual representation. Maybe. Maybe that'll go on the Insta. I don't Nah, nah. Okay, guys, you're never going to see it unless you hang out with us. Or if you get a podcast on Marshland Media and I add you to that group and you You look back on old ones. But the funniest thing is that I posted it and I was, my friend and I were laughing so hard. And no, it was crickets in the chat. And I was like, oh, great. I was, (laughs) I felt kind of bad for the person. Plus we were watching Glow. So Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to distract myself. I was like, oh, Okay. The third missed season, opportunity. Great. This third season of Glow is amazing. I'm glad that's amazing. But Frankenstein at Looking Glass, if you are in Chicago, check it out. It's absolutely beautiful, especially if you love narrative theater or Frankenstein. Corwin, I need a show. walk. What? A walk, you know, the pan. Oh, yes. Those are beautiful. This movie, one of the reasons that I like this movie, I watched it a long time ago. For one, George Takei, because he's absolutely amazing and incredible thing. Yes. And two, I love all the food. I am a food person. And if you followed the Instagram, you will know that I have been posting food videos or food pictures today because I did make brunch with my friend. We made some homemade from scratch cinnamon rolls. So I've got like the dough, a uh, little dough boy that we did before he rose. Also, and then today made is into dough. Yeah. Today is Saturday, August 17th. Yes, today is Saturday, August 17th. Yeah, we're recording just a few days before posting. That's but you totally said, fine. you know, yeah. we're, yeah, I was posting today just in case anyone wants to look back. Yeah. Or if so, they're listening to this in a year, they can look back. Well, I just, I just posted the dough and then I posted a picture of the cinnamon rolls. I think Ooh. my friend tagged me in a post, uh, another post with like the full thing of cinnamon rolls because I didn't think about it until after we 
dug in. But yeah, I, I helped make those. We made some biscuits, some bacon, eggs, gravy. It was delicious. Good brunch. Yeah, baby. I also can't believe James thinks that my brunch, me hanging out for brunch and everything is going to be like a couple hours. This is gay brunch. I am going to be there forever, James. Wow, overextending your stay, it sounds like. Uh, no. They're like, no. why is this robot still around? Why Shouldn't he be vacuuming in the corner? He needs to vacuum. He needs to go plug his charger in. I was making a Roomba reference. He needs to go plug his charger in. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, this movie also has Nicole Sullivan, so we've got two yeah. names in it. Two good names. Nicole Sullivan, who was on Mad TV... Also, James informed me that she did the voice of Shigo. I'm pretty. I'm on 100% Kim Possible. sure. I had no idea. But that's amazing. But I know her primarily from Worst Cooks in America because she was on that show and I fucking love that show. Absolutely incredible. Also, if you don't know how to cook, watch Worst Cooks in America. You'll learn. They teach you some good stuff. And uh, yeah, so let me go through some notes while James is looking up the voice of Shigo. Uh, yeah, it was Nicole Sullivan. That's incredible. She's great. She's she's great. She plays a white lady really well, is what I will say about her. All right. So why are there so few people here? That's what one of the people in the restaurant said to show us the restaurant wasn't doing well. The son, when he got his mom home, he hid his cigarettes, but there were empty bottle or like mostly drunk bottles of whiskey like everywhere. So it's like, I don't want her to see the cigarettes, but I don't care if she thinks I'm an alcoholic. It's fine. Hey, it's it's fine to be an alcoholic, guys, as long as you're a functioning one. And then he hid the, the lube and condoms before letting his mother into his room. But he didn't change the sheets, as James put it out. Uh, yeah, That's, you need to change, change your, your sheets. Fucking sheets. Nicole Sullivan playing an awkward and invasive person, a neighbor, is great. If you want to see her do things, one of her beautiful. best lines was, I didn't give you drugs, you took drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Nicole Sullivan and the mom sort of start hanging out and being friends, and the mom asks for an aspirin, and she's like, Nicole's like, oh, it's, it's on the counter. So the mom gets it and takes it. And Which then I called. Nicole, yeah. It, James was like, oh, she's going to take Quaaludes. And I was like, you're very close. And she, Nicole Sullivan, suddenly realized that that was her bottle of aspirin that was really ecstasy. And the mom took ecstasy and got real high. But the whole time I was like, if James and I ever were just hanging out and he accidentally took drugs, that would be that would be what what happened. That would be it. It would just be it would be him freaking out. And then me being like, no, it's fine. And he'd be like, you have to take one with me. No, I would throw up the pill. He would throw up the pill. But in my mind, he would not. Hey, guys, Corwin's mind is that of a robot. He doesn't think logically. mind. So, yes, that happened. Beautiful. The mom, we know that she knows the son's gay because she finds his dirty magazines. Do people still have dirty magazines? I want dirty magazines. Why do you want dirty magazines? Because then when you're looking for porn online, there's the quest of like the new and like another fantastic one that meets your standards. And then your standards just get higher and higher. Or you're like, oh, I watch this same one. I do watch an instructional porno on how to have an orgasm. That's one of my favorites. That's one I go back to all the time. But if I'm not in the mood for that one, I need to find another <laughs> one. Uh, listeners of What the Hell Mouth have heard that story. That's why I just glossed over it really quickly. Uh... But if you had a magazine, it's like, oh, well, this is all I have. Like, I have to... Uh, be comfortable with this and be like, hey, this is what's going to, this will be what I'm taking a journey with. The funniest part is the mom later told the son, she's like, I read your magazines. <laughs> she definitely looked through Beefcake. Which I was thinking. Reading beef, the articles. I was thinking Beefcake was just going to be a muscle builder. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what Beefcake is. I also don't really know any dirty magazines besides, I guess, Playboy. Yeah. You have Playgirl. Yeah. Peter Steele with that big old dick. Okay. Uh, there's a Peter Steele, lead singer of Typo Negative. He posed for Playgirl and 
two of my friends were obsessed with typo negative. So what they would do was just HTML spam our friends MySpace comments with that picture. <laughs> and we found out that if you just... It, so when you used to be on MySpace, you would click it and then it would load and show that it posted. However, if you kept spamming it before it would load, it would just post however many times you clicked it. So... There was no way to batch delete things, so our friends would have to delete them <laughs> one by one. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful thing. You're welcome. And he has a big ass dick. That's hilarious. Check him out, guys. R.I.P. And then Nicole Sullivan, intruding for some toilet paper, sees the mom with the magazine that says, you just found out, huh? About Elliot? And the mom's like, no, I knew. But the mom is so awkward about it, and that's one of the, like, moments of tension in the in the movie is that the mom she knows her son's gay but she hasn't really confronted that in any real sense she hasn't really seen him with any men or anything like that so the moment after she comes down from her high ecstasy high she sees him and his new beau in bed together and then sort of no, his name's ian not his beau i know his name's i know ian. jesus so she like sort of awkwardly sits downstairs until they go downstairs. And then when Ian is trying to be nice, she just sort of freaks out and is like, I've got to go and just leaves, buys three chocolate ice creams, which James was very upset about because she could have gone back and bought in them individually. But she just opens the wrapper and then just engorges herself on them in the most awkward way possible. I initially it was beautiful. I initially thought that. But then after seeing what she selected, they would have been fine for a little bit because she got a drumstick. Chocolate coated. Yeah, yeah. It, they're all chocolate coated in chocolate instead of just ice cream treats that can't be beat. Just melting because they're only ice cream. Like an ice cream sandwich would be bad. A uh, weird looking SpongeBob would be bad. Uh, Choco Taco might be. No, that's, that's in case. Yeah. Chocolate. I don't know. It was. I mean, how fast she was eating them in the first place. She it, they would have been fine. Yeah, she was just taking big old bites and then sobbing until George Takei came and sat down and gave her confidence in life. Talked about struggle. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's actually a really beautiful movie. And uh, yeah, Corwin, what's your longest relationship? Is that an uncomfortable question to ask? It's I'm a doing weird something question. I'm doing something from the movie. Yeah, they did that in the movie. It's a weird question. I honestly don't even know. It hasn't been long because I'm I'm very quick with being like, oh, if I'm not into this, I'm not into this. And yeah, next month my longest will be uh, six years. Yeah, I don't I don't have that. If I was in a long relationship, I would be in a relationship still probably. But most of them, I'm like, if this isn't working out for whatever reason, it's not working out. So yeah, that's the answer. I've pro I've been in relationships probably almost half of my life, it feels like. I have not. But also a problem with that is that I didn't really start dating, actually dating until college. Yeah. Because I, you know, had the gay thing yep. in a very uh, Southern and uh, Bible Belt town. Yeah, that's what we say. And we say, and fuck the South and fuck the Bible and fuck a belt. Because you just got to let them pants fall down, guys. Okay, James took that in a direction. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real laugh, guys. He looked at his paper and it might have been a delayed one. Who knows? He, oh man, he, he short wired, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, because I just didn't finish. I just said he took it in a direction and then you loved it. It was great. Yeah. Love that. Love that journey. Shit's Creek, y'all. I think I'm done with notes. I also have that she stole the condoms out of his jacket because she found them. She's like, oh, I, I found I found condoms in my son's jacket. Well, I and think then she showed them to I don't even know what C Nicole Sullivan's character Marlin was. or it was Marin. Like, no, 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 no. It, it Marin. Like, Margaret or no, it's it's Marin or Marin. It was something else. But she shows her the condoms and Nicole Sullivan's like, well, at least, you know, he's she, and she also asked if he was a slut. And Nicole's like, I don't know, but at least, you know, he's being safe. Well, he was until you stole his condoms. Maureen. Maureen. The tango Maureen. So 
Yes. That was also great. Love that. And then Nicole Sullivan's character is just beautiful in this movie because later when the mom goes and sort of apologizes to Ian and is like, oh, I shouldn't have stormed out like that. And Ian's like, oh, no, it's okay. I understand. And then Nicole's like, well, she could have done it, but she didn't have to be such a bitch about it. Just beautiful she uh, also tried to borrow a roll of toilet paper she bar- she's like i need to borrow some toilet paper i will bring this right back and i was like Mom's no like, you you keep can it. keep that keep that hey we got toilet paper in another movie like uh that one movie with can you ever forgive me that's the name of the movie all those toilet paper rolls oh yeah yeah that's such a weird Recurring connection theme. no it's not <laughs> I'm going to find a bunch of movies that talk about toilet paper. Guys, let me, a, a teacher once said this back in the day. This, re, it's relating to toilet paper. A science teacher, ninth or 10th grade said, hey, carry baby wipes with you. Because then after you're done wiping, use a baby wipe to really do a clean job on it. If you don't have a bidet, I mean. And you'll feel great. And I finally started doing it after years of wanting to. It's fantastic. And it cuts down because I'm also, I have a hairy butt, guys. And because of that, people would always say, oh, do you have dingleberries? So I I believe I overwipe on a mostly speaking scent. I think it comes out this week. Uh, my, My butt was bleeding during the recording. I don't think it was actively bleeding, but I had wiped and it was bleeding. Oh, James. From wiping. Well, I'm glad you discovered the beauty of using sanitation wipes. Yeah, you just use, you you know, get all the, the big stuff out of the way, and then you do a wipe, and then well, dry off, you're they good. They have a whole joke about that in Deadpool 2, I think. Where Probably. they're like, I mean, if you're going to use, to- like, if you got shit on your hand... Would you just use oh, a yeah. paper towel to yep. clean that off? Or would you want to wash your hands? A friend of mine said that back in well, I was in maybe 12th grade. He said, because we were talking about bidets and someone was like, I'm not doing that. Great. Yeah. Someone was like, I'm not doing that. Pretty much saying uh, th- that seems a little fruity to me. Having water. Is it sh- gay yeah. to have yeah, your ass clean? It's not, guys. It's not. So he then explained it of saying... If you had poop on your hand, you wouldn't turn your hand behind your back and then wipe it and look at the wipe and say, oh, yeah, there's still some on. Let me get another wipe. Not Still not looking at your hand. Do it again. Oh, there's no more poop visibly on the wipe. I'm clean now. Yeah, you got to wash. Yeah, guys, please wash your friggin' buttholes. Wash your buttholes. And your pee holes. Oh, my God. They also made dumplings in this movie, and I think that's the next thing I want to try to, like, my big... So I like doing different cooking things. If I see it on TV or on, like, Bon Appetit or, like, something like that, I'll see it, and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to try it. And I think dumplings... I think I'm going to try dumplings. That's going to be my next thing that I try to do, try to make. Someday I'm going to see Corwin on TV and I'm going to say I'm going to cook him. I'll make a cake looking like you. Please don't cook me. I'll freaking roast you, though, man. Don't roast me. Man, Corwin's such a robot. Um, The computer's like, friend? (laughs) Is that a roast? Because I just made a new friend with your computer, James. Oh, no. It's a honey roast. I'm going to honey pot. Honey roast? Yeah. Honey honey roasted ham? No, a honey roast is a roast, but you're saying nice nice things? Yeah. I would love to participate in a honey roast, as in be roasted with honey. Oh. Yeah. Corwin, no, that's cannibalism. Not in that way, James. Yeah, but I'm you're a robot. Roasted... Is it cannibalism oh, if you're nope. eating a robot? But oh. is, is your f- does your flesh bleed? That is a question I will not be answering uh, on the oh. air, James. Guys, I'm going to friggin' That's give him too a... too personal. Uh, well, if it bruises, that means it's flesh, so at least you're, you're a cyborg. Or do I just have very excellent processors and graphic oh, imaging shit. on my skin? Guys, you heard it here first. Corwin's real advanced. Real advanced, y'all. I, th- I think I'm I'm done. I'm done with the notes, too. This is this was just a cute little movie. It's also got plenty of people of color and uh, other cultures and things like that in it. So that's beautiful. Corwin, we do have to do a follow-up from last week. What was our last movie? Our last movie was Les Bomb. We forgot to say if we would recommend it. I would recommend the movie, yes. I would, too. 
And uh, you heard it here, folks. We'll recommend that movie. And I would, James, would you recommend this movie? Absolutely. I would also absolutely recommend this movie. Are there any movies that we haven't recommended to watch at least once? Oh, yes. Make a Wish. Well, that was you. I would still recommend watching it. Oh, both of us. Yeah. Uh, No, I think we've either one or the other have recommended it. Just because most of the movies I'm like, oh, it's gay? Watch it. Yeah. Um, But no, this one is highly recommended in the sense that you will watch it and actually enjoy it. And you I, may want to go and eat some dumplings. I think one one or two of the eating out movies you did not recommend. <laughs> and then the guests we had didn't recommend it either, but I wholeheartedly did. I mean, they're movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I they they are movies what that movie? are in the genre they are in. And if you like that genre, watch them, enjoy them. They're not movies that I would necessarily watch multiple times. I I was going to ask what movie did I ask or did I say this looks this looks like a movie but it was Vampire (laughs) Boys. Ah, this looks like a movie. God, man, Vampire Boys two just we also that guy's flat. The just just, complete sidetrack. I don't know why Vampire Boys brought me there, but Vampire Boys brought me there. That guy's apartment was beautiful. Oh, like how big it was and all it of that was stuff. Huge, yeah. beautiful. He didn't and take in care Los of it. Angela's that would be so expensive. So expensive. Whose house were they at? I want to go to there. It was a loft, you know that for sure. It was beautiful. Well, it was a lot, but there were stairs, and then there was a room because the mom went upstairs and then went like aside and found the room. So I think, like, but I think those were set up like lofts. Like you see it more in. Maureen Nicole Sullivan's house yeah. where it was clearly oh, just like oh yeah 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 I got Jinx. you okay yeah okay what were you saying about Vampire Boys sorry to interrupt oh no it was just an insane so movie rude. but we need to watch another vampire gay movie which may be in October guys I mean I feel like we've at this point the listeners that are still listening at this point. We have gotten to the point where we're watching movies with You Should Meet My Son, where the the head of the movie, like the main one in the movie, is not necessarily gay um, or LGBTQ. They just happen to be the parent of. So we can sort of verge more into the territory where movies are themed. Um, and I'm saying that specifically for October because a lot of scary movies or old horror movies do have a lot of LGBTQ film history to let's them just, and everything. So we'll we'll verge into that territory shortly. Let's just tell everyone. Let's just... Uh, do you want to go on record and say, fuck it, we're doing Nightmare on Elm Street 2? We will do Nightmare on Elm Street 2 in October. Yeah. We will do that movie in October for everyone that has requested it. We will be doing that in October. We should get Nicole and Raphael on there. Unless there's someone who who you know who really wants to do it. I don't know. There's been a lot of people that have talked to me about that movie, so... Because Raphael, when I told him we were going to do this podcast back in November, he said, oh man, you should do Nightmare on Elm Street, Street too. too. Yeah. There's been a lot, but there's uh, there's there's a lot of movies that fit that criteria where they are... They do have gay themes and things like that because a lot of horror movies back in the day had, you know, monsters and things that were LGBTQ because that was one of the few places you could put a LGBTQ person. And uh, so the people that made those movies were like, well, if they're going to say that's acceptable, then let's just do it. Yeah. Corwin, what you got to plug? I have to plug my theater company, of course, uh, Sawbucks Theater Collective. Please follow them. Keep up with them. We'll be doing a show in the future. We're not doing anything at the moment, but in the future we will be. So, you know, follow them. They're great. They're beautiful, wonderful people. And you can uh, hear Brian, the artistic director, on a previous episode. So go and listen. It's the Pride episode. So that's my main plug. And then I also created an Instagram at this movie's gay. Yeah. And I've been posting just random shit on there because I'm not sure what to post. Post so whatever I will you be want. Posting random shit if you'd like to see what I'm doing, uh, particularly probably cooking or random things like going to the theater to see Frankenstein, then you can follow that and uh, enjoy. I will also try to somehow do updates for new episodes coming out. We'll see. 
We'll see what happens. We'll see where it takes me. If you post a clip of us or a picture of us watching the movie, that's Yeah, I good. took a picture of that today. So, oh, maybe you'll see that on Monday yeah. when this comes out. Check the Instagram. I will post a picture of James and I watching the movie. I look weird with a big old beard. You could also do that Yogi Bear one that I'm pulling. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to put that on today. Nice. Down the hatch, but so, natch. So, yeah. Instagram. Also follow us on Twitter. At this movie's gay. Uh, James and I both share the Twitter, so you could hear from James, you could hear from me. If you want to talk to me specifically, follow me on Twitter at CoreWinning. C O R W I N G I N G. God, I'm spelling my own fucking Twitter wrong. That's also my Instagram. Corwin with I N G at the end. Hey guys, do you want to hear me three other times during the week? Well, you got to check out my other podcasts, such as on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. What the hell mouth? That's with TC and Anissa. We're watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and kind of talking about it. What about on Wednesdays? Are you into Dungeons and Dragons? And you're like, wow, this trope of the hero saving the earth. They were friggin' in a tavern and found each other. Are you tired of that? Well, guess what? Check out Hit It and Crit It because we're in a cult and we're trying to destroy the world, baby. We're evil. And whoa, 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 whoa. Do you like Super Sentai or Power Rangers or just want to hear me and my betrothed pseudo-argue for an hour and a half? That's right, guys. Check out Mostly Speaking Sentai, which Corwin's been on twice. Check those twice. episodes out. Two whole times. I watched Godzilla. Yeah, one of the times. And also check out my rap music, Marsh Land Monster. You can find information about all of this stuff as well as download all of my CDs for free on MLMPod.com. And that's all I've got. That's what she wrote. I've been Corwin. I've been James. Bye. 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 Whoa, Corwin went longer. Longer. Labber. Ladder. <laughs> This has been a Marshland Media production, produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.